where? 1 Corinthians chapter 16. I, uh, I've read this several times, but there's something jumped out maybe the other night that I hadn't uh, paid a, enough attention to before. And uh, so I want to share a few things with you tonight. And uh, Everybody know what the word addiction means, don't you? Yeah. Addicted? That means you just can't help yourself but partake of it. You just got to have it. Just got to have it. Did you know that word was in the scripture? Addicted. Yeah. It's in the scripture. How many of you have your places in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 say Hallelujah. All right, drop down to verse 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men, be strong. Let all things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, ye you know the house of Stephenus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. That ye submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. I am glad of the coming of Stephenus and Fortunus and Achaeus, for that which was lacking on your part they have supplied. For they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore acknowledge ye them that are such. <coughs> and the word addicted did stand out to me, but that's not altogether what we're going to talk about. It does have a whole lot to do with our points tonight. But as you, those of you that have read... Paul wrote a very lengthy chapter, 58 verses on the resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15. And then he started in 16 about charity, about helping those that were in need. Now, if you'll study this out, you will find in the book of Acts that it was prophesied by one of the prophets that there would be a drought in Judea. And that the land would be dry and there would not be enough food. It was prophesied that that was going to happen. And so that began to happen in the times of the early church. And so what Paul was doing, he was urging the Gentiles whom he had preached to, who had received the Lord Jesus in their lives, he was urging them to make up and send offerings to Jerusalem for the church there that was in need and that was hungry, uh, that they their need might also be supplied. And he said, you have reaped spiritual things, the things that was given to the children of Israel, you have reaped through Christ, and so therefore the things that you are now blessed with, you ought also to share them with the church of Jerusalem, which is in need. And so they began to do that. And Macedonia did that, and the Corinthian church did that. And we see here that there was uh, one man there that was very, very strong in this action. And uh, him and two of his friends had addicted themselves to this cause. That means they just was into it adamantly. You know, they weren't a druggie, but they were into it as a druggie would be, if you could understand that. They were into trying to send relief to those that were hungry in a sister church, in the church in Jerusalem. And uh, so Paul is telling them of this, and he says this in verse 15. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephenus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to to the ministry of the saints. If there's anything we ought to get addicted to, it ought to be to helping and loving one another. Are you listening to me? Yes. He had just said, let all things 
things be done with charity. Whatever you do, do it because you love Jesus or because you love your brother or your sister. And when you do that, do you know that it goes on your account in heaven for God loves a cheerful giver. Paul had just pointed that out just before that. But I, I thought of this guy named Stephenus, and his name actually means crown wearer, and the one that is crowned. So he had a name of wearing a crown. Why? Because he was doing a work for God. You know, those that fight the battle shall wear the crown. Are you with me tonight? Those that addict themselves to the things of God in love and minister to those that are in need, God is going to crown them one day. I believe that, don't you? I believe that God's got a reward for everything that you do, whether it be good or whether it be evil. He's got a reward for you. I want a good reward, don't you? I want a good reward. So in order to receive a good reward, you need to be addicted to the things of God. That means you just need to be overwhelmed with doing them. Just be diligent about it. Be dedicated. Have yourself uh, sanctified and and just be willing to do whatever you can do for the glory of God. And uh, he, he talks about this Stephenus, and it's kind of amazing. He says he's the first fruits of Achaia. So I looked that up, and that is, that is a region in Greece that is the southern tip that runs down towards the sea where Corinth and Athens is located. And Paul said he's the first fruits of Achaia. In other words, he's the one that first, re one of the first ones to receive the gospel when Paul started preaching there. He received the gospel and he run with it. Hallelujah. That's what we need. We need some people that will get saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and run with the work of God. That's the kind of thing we need. We need some crown back wearers. Somebody that's willing to work for a crown. Somebody that will run in the race for God and set the fields on fire for God. We need those. And so he is saying he's the first fruits. And if you go back and read in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, you will find that when Paul started preaching and, and he won Stephenus to the Lord, he baptized him in his household. And then from that, he didn't have to do any more baptizing. Apollos came along and other ministers came along and maybe even Stephen himself started baptizing folks. And Paul just went on preaching and preaching and preaching and they'd get saved and somebody else would baptize them. And he said, but I baptized him. And uh, he was not ashamed to admit that he had baptized this man because the fruits was following him. The fruits was following him. He was addicted to the work of God. I, uh, my dad told me here a few years ago, he hadn't baptized anybody for a while. He's not able, but uh, a few years ago he told me, he said, I don't get in a hurry to baptize anymore. He said, sometimes they'll come and pray a little prayer and shed a few tears. And they'll want to go down to the river, and the next thing you know, they're out and gone somewhere else. Yeah. He said, so I don't get in a hurry. I kind of wait till they kind of get settled. And then if they want to be baptized, I'll baptize them. And uh, he said, especially in cold weather because it hurts me to get out there. And uh, so I kind of understand that. But Paul Paul said, I baptized Stephen in his household. He's the first fruits of Achaia. And he's addicted to the word of God. Receive him. Receive him and follow him. And he said, and the things that you lacked as a church as a whole, these three men, Stephenus and Fortunus and Achaeus, they made up the difference. Even by their own hands, they made up the difference of what the whole church should have done. My, 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 if everybody get on fire and be a crown wearer, be addicted to the work of God, what could we do for the glory of God? How exciting would it be when we come together and people coming together with all their heart, soul, and mind set on living for God and loving one another, reaching out to some lost poor soul that needs
needs to know Jesus. Uh, somebody that needs something. Somebody that may just need a ride to the doctor. Somebody that may just need a few bucks to buy some groceries. Somebody that might just need somebody to come and sit with them for a few minutes and give them a kind and comforting word. What would it be like if we should be addicted to the work of God? I think we're addicted, but not to the work of God. We're addicted to what we want in a lot of cases. You know, the, there's three people we serve pretty diligently most of the time. Me, myself, and I. We serve them three people pretty diligently. But if we just get on far for God, maybe we could have a name like Stephenus, a crown wearer. One that is crowned. What was he crowned with? He was crowned with the glory of God because he was doing the work of God. That's the kind of crown we need to wear in this life. Now we know that there are more than one crown. And I'm not going to try to go through all of them tonight. But I want you to know that there is a crown of life that is coming that is laid up for each and every one of us that stay faithful to the end of the race. But there is a crown of glory that can be bestowed upon you even in this life because you are a worker for Almighty God with all of your heart into it. With all of your heart into it. And I know uh, Sunday night we mentioned lip service. And I don't know if you all got to watch that or not, but... Uh, uh, and we asked the question, does your lips and your heart agree? And Ben came up to me after the service Sunday night and he said, you said that and it just hit me right full in the face. Uh, you know, and that's the way it ought to be. It ought to grab our minds sometimes. And, and we ought to be stirred in our hearts when the Word of God comes forth. We ought to be stirred. We need to get addicted to the things of God. That ought to be our first priority is finding some way to do something to glorify the name of the Lord. He says just before he mentions this man, he says... Watch ye, stand ye in the faith, quit you like men. That means stand up. Men, stand up. Yes. Be courageous. Quit acting like sissies <coughs> concerning the things of God. That's what he's saying. Quit you like men. Stand up and be courageous. Do something for the glory of God. Quit bowing down and cowing under every time some obstacle comes along. But say, I'm in the battle for the Lord. And I will stay in the battle till I see the victory. I will fight because I'm addicted on this road to glory. To do something that will magnify the holy name of Jesus. We need to get excited about that. Get excited. You know, Asa, uh, I, uh, while I was studying this, there was a quote that I had heard that came to my mind. And so I had to go back out and look it up because I didn't remember who had made it. So, uh, shame on me for that, I guess. But I remembered the quote, I just didn't remember who made it. But on January the 20th, 1961, with a deep snow, sun shining on a deep snow in Washington, John F. Kennedy said these words, My fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Now, I was just 11 years old at that time. And then he went on to say, my fellow citizens of the world, ask not what Americans can do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. Well, I got good news for you. If you want to see men set free, just keep on preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. There is no liberty any better than the liberty that you can find in Christ. 
Christ. Uh, hallelujah. We need to get addicted. You know, some people want to go to a church and they say, well, do they have this and do they have that? Can they do this for me? Can they do that for me? You know, you ought to want to go somewhere where you can get in there and be a helper with somebody and work together to glorify the Lord. You ought to find a place where you can be used of God. You know, and I'm not against big churches. Don't get me wrong. I want this one to grow. So why would I be against big churches? But sometimes people go to big churches because they want to fit in the crowd and they want to get something out of it without putting anything into it. We ought to want to do something for the glory of God. I'm not just talking about patriotism for the country. I'm talking about a love for God and a love for our brothers and sisters that supersedes all other things. We need to be addicted to the work of charity. Put ourselves behind the wheel. Hallelujah. Don't jump on the wagon to ride. Get behind and push it. Get behind and push. Take your faith and push. The wagon's pretty well loaded already. Somebody needs to push it up the hill. It's a hard climb in the times we're living in. We need somebody that's so addicted to the faith that they want to do something for God. And that instead of saying, well, what can that church do for me? Think about what the Lord's already done for you. It ought to provoke you to say, what can I do now for the Lord? Just even as a token. I know I could never repay him, but what could I do just as a token for the great love and the mercy and the kindness that he's shown upon me? That ought to be enough to get you addicted. It ought to be enough to get you dedicated. Don't see much dedication anymore. Well, I'll do it if I feel like it. Well, I don't care nothing about that. That ain't my cup of tea. What about everybody else that needs to be edified? Do you have no feelings for them? Come on. Is it all about you and what you like? Or should we all pull together and work together? I mean, I love doing things for the work of the Lord. So I don't want what I'm saying to be misunderstood and somebody think I'm complaining. But there are times that it would be such joy if we could do it together. If we could do it together. You know, If nobody else shows up, I don't mind washing the building. I'll wash the building. If nobody else shows up, you know, I told them one morning, I came in here and I said, well, you know, I passed by here this week and I had a thought. Somebody needs to mow that yard. And then I had another thought, well, I guess it ought to be me. But you know, once in a while, it'd be all right if somebody else had the same thought and said it ought to be me and we all work together. Yes. Come on. I'm not complaining, church, and I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to put a guilt trip on you. You do what you want to do. But I'm saying there's a blessing in it if you'll get addicted to the work of God, if you'll want to love God, and if you'll want to love His people and do things for the house of God that maybe it's not in your comfort zone, but you think would be edifying to somebody else, then put your shoulder to the wheel and get addicted for the glory of God. Oh, Jesus, yes, Lord. Hmm. Didn't know I was going to say all that, but I'm not going to take none of it back. What kind of church will this be? If every one of us, every time we seen something that needed doing, would say, well, I guess I ought to do that. Yeah. 
Just think on that. Just think on that. Take it home with you and think on it. I'm not scolding you, church. Please don't take it that way. But if we all work together, that's what Paul was saying to these folks at Corinthian, at Corinth. He said, Accius and Fortunus and Stephenus, they, took, they stood in the gap. They made up the hedge for what you as a whole church should have been doing. That's what he was saying to them. You should also have been addicted to the work of charity. How powerful can we be if we'll take this word and instead of saying, well, what's in it for me? And say, how can I help somebody? How can I help somebody? Now, not everything that I do, I do that's in my comfort zone. You know, I try to be helpful. Do sometimes people have needs and I get a little overwhelmed and think, oh, I, I, I really didn't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I do. Sure. I do. I get tired. I get tired. Sometimes I think, I thought I had it made for this evening. I wasn't able to do this. I was going to take a rest. But what I do, I get up and try to find another spurt of energy and go. Why? Because I'm addicted. I'm addicted. There's something inside me that drives me and pushes me beyond what I think my limit is sometimes. Sometimes I get to the point that I think I've went my limit. I think I'm just, I just got to sit here. And then the phone rings. And somebody has a need. And somehow the grace of God comes and gives me just enough more energy to make one more run for the evening. Get addicted. And wear a crown. Wear the crown of the glory of God because you're addicted to the work of charity. All right? I don't know if you guys much out of that as I did. I've read that many, many times, never saw all this in.